Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today working on the metal planer restoration some more and trying to get it to that point where we can get some belts on there and fire it up. But before uh, we do the belts, I got one more thing we need to get put on it to actually be powered by the counter shaft. And that is our lubricator, our oiler system here. Uh, if you guys remember, we put in some oil lines actually to, to go down to the ways on the machine. So that was, as it was running, it was constantly putting some oil in there. This is a Bajor oiler that a viewer sent me a while back. I've had it for some time now and I need to get it incorporated into the machine now. It's got a gear on it right now, but we're gonna run this thing off of a pulley that's gonna be belted up to the uh, counter shaft up on the top. And basically, as long as that motor is sitting there running, uh, this pump is gonna be pumping. And the way this pump works is, I don't know how many revolutions it has to take here. I, it's quite a few, probably about 100 revolutions. But every time it does about 100 RPMs or 100 rotations on this, it gives a little tiny squirt of oil. And it comes out of this line. And of course, we've already put a manifold system in to deliver it to four places. Uh, on the ways. Uh, so with this going, basically as the machine is running, it's just going to constantly be putting uh, just a tiny amount of oil in there, but it will allow, keep it so that those ways never get dry and they keep it lubricated up real well. Really nice Bajor pump. I actually contacted Bajor to see if I could get some information on this. This oiler is obsolete, it's no longer made. They didn't even have any paperwork on it uh, anymore. Uh, but the good news is, is that I've, I have kind of gone through it and it works just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So we're gonna use it. Obviously we'll replace the, uh, the plumbing on here. I've got the stuff to do that with, uh, but the pump is in great shape. So here's the challenge. I've got to mount this on the little bracket up on the top side of the planer and I get it where we can belt it up. And I've kind of got it figured out how I'm going to do it. Uh, when I got this, it actually had this bracket up underneath it, but I need a bracket to mount this to. So I basically got to make a bracket to mount the bracket to. And the bracket I'm going to make is, is really quite simple. It's just going to be a right angle piece. And uh, I've got some plate here. This is just some six inch wide plate. I think this is three and a half inches on the back. This is going to mount to the top rail, uh, the top cross piece on the machine, and we'll have a right angle brace, brace in here. We'll have some brackets on the side to give it some support. We'll bolt this down, and then basically this bracket will bolt to this, and then the boiler will sit up on top of it. I think it's going to work out fine. Um, we just got to get this thing fabricated. So I've already got up some metal to make this out of. Uh, I need to wire wheel it, clean it up, get my holes in it, and go ahead and get it fabricated. And that's what we're about to do. So let's, uh, let's get started on it. We're going to start by just wire wheeling these uh, plates. This is uh, some stuff that I found out in the scrap pile. We got a little bit of just rust on them, no big deal. They'll clean right up. This will be the plate that bolts down to the top and uh, I want to, I'm going to have three holes in it to have bolts in. I want to go in an inch and I see we want to do three inches, have it right in the center. So we got one right in the front center and then I'm going to have two more basically in an inch. One inch there. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take a center punch here and we will get those holes ready to drill. Exact placement on these is not critical. I'm just going to use this as a template and then we will drill holes to, to bolt this down to the machine. The next piece I need to put some holes in here to mount this bracket to. And we're just going to do it kind of flush with the top up there. I just put that mark on there to kind of center this thing up. 
And we're just gonna use a transfer punch. What is that, 11, 7 sixteenths. And I think what I'll do is I'll drill the first one and put a bolt in there and then we'll do the other ones up there. Keep them lined up just right. All right, let's go do some drilling. I'm over at the radial drill and we're about to uh, drill these holes in here. I'm just gonna start with a quarter inch drill bit. Let's see, we need to speed this thing up. half inch hole now that was a quarter inch drill bit put a half inch in here slow my speed down a little bit for a larger diameter bit here second plate in here. This one gets drilled to 7 16 but I'm going to do the same thing. Start with a quarter, go up. We'll drill the first hole and then put a bolt in there to get our holes lined up just right for the, the second and third hole. A uh, couple of comments. So on the uh, radial drill here, had some comments from people in the previous episodes telling me that my uh, lever is backwards here for forward and reverse. They said that uh, to go for the drilling, you should pull it to you, and to, for reverse, you should push it away. And I can't argue with you. Uh, you know, logic would say that's the way the drill's turning. For me, though, in my mind, uh, forward is forward, and reverse is pulling back to you. So I know that when I walk over to this machine, that when I push it forward, that that is turning it in the opposite direction, but that's in my, my mind is forward, whereas if I want to go the other way is reverse. So that's the way I wired it. When I got this machine, I had to totally rewire all the electrical stuff and I had to replace the contactors in it because they were a mess. And uh, I wired it up in a way that my brain makes sense. So it may not make sense in your brain, uh, but this is my machine. I'm the one that runs it, so I've got it wired the way I want it. So anyway, just mentioning that, um, let's go ahead. This machine does have this automatic down feed on it. So when I, you got your quill is right here. But when you come down here, these are called the cow horns because they look like cow horns. You pull them out and you notice it just automatically feeds down. And there we go. So really, easy way to go. I'm going to go ahead and we'll change this out, put a 7 16 inch drill bit in here. I love this radial drill. It is just so nice to have in the shop. And same thing, we'll just drill right down through there. All right. Let's go uh, transfer our other holes and we'll be back over here and finish those last two holes up. All right, so I took that and just bolted it on there. That way my second holes will be lined up just right using the bolt. Now one little thing that's a little nice feature 
I guess you could say, is this is my welding table. And when I got it, this table was actually originally, I think it was, uh, they had some kind of machinery mounted on this. I have no idea what it was or anything else. Uh, when I got it, it was being used as a welding table, but it has all these holes drilled in it. There's actually holes drilled and tapped in it. But that's really nice because I got this bolt. I can just drop it right over that hole and I still can now transfer that in there and I'm sitting right on the table. So um, these holes in this table really come in handy all the time for exactly this kind of thing. Um, I, I actually, when I saw it, I was like, man, I wish I didn't have all those holes in there. But after I used it for a while, I realized it was an advantage. All right, there's one. Not a lot of clearance in there. Now those holes are right in the center of those. Again, I'm using the transfer punch. It's the exact same size as the hole, and it's got a center punch in the very center. This little uh, transfer punch set really comes in handy. All right, we got those holes marked. Let's go drill them out. All right, I've got this set up to weld this at, at a right angle and uh, off camera I went in and ground some bevels on the top and bottom for some weld prep to give a place for that bead to go and we're just set up over here on the welding table I've got one of these uh, squares in here made by fireball tool which are just really awesome for this kind of a setup so I got it set up nice and square what I'm going to start with is just kind of tacking this in place and then I'm going to cut some gussets to kind of go on either side to give it some support and we'll get those welded in as well. Once I get the gussets tacked in, we'll go ahead and weld it all up. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, tack that in place. I'm just using my uh, Lincoln Electric uh, 210 MP power MIG. We're going to MIG weld this. So let me go ahead and get this tacked in. the gussets I found this little piece of just scrap metal over there it was already this length width everything else and what I'm going to do is I'm going to saw it diagonally like such over on the bandsaw and that'll give me two triangular gussets to go in there uh, one side will be taller than the other uh, but we got one side over here that's taller than the other on the part itself so I'm going to go to my bandsaw now and we'll just split that right down the line all right, we're over on the do-all bandsaw, metal cutting bandsaw. And see if we can split that line right there. So there's my first gusset. I'm going to go ahead and tack that in place as well. I'll be in your way. Sorry. All right. I think that'll hold. Let me get the other one on the other side done the same way. All right, I think I have got it ready to weld.
didn't like welding that in steps like that, but I couldn't see where I was going. Well, I got it all fabricated now and I've bolted my other little bracket on here and I'm just doing kind of a test fit. This is going to just, I'm going to drill and tap some holes in the top of this. This will bolt straight down to it. And uh, now we've got a platform up here that oiler can set up to. And again, we'll belt it up. We're going to put a pulley on here and a pulley on the oiler and uh, get that linkage going. I think this is going to work just fine. Uh, we purposely got it up a little bit high so we got clearance for the motor because right now the motor's all the way down in the lowest position so I wanted to have room to be able to raise the motor up um, and have still have clearance up underneath this so I think we're going to be fine plus the the pulleys will be more or less coming straight off of this onto the oiler once it gets mounted up on here it's going to be just about right so i like it i think what we're going to do now is uh i'm just going to wire wheel all this stuff real good put a coat of paint on it and uh let that dry overnight and then we'll come out here and get the holes drilled get this thing mounted on here well here we go i've got my bracket all put together and mounted. I went ahead and got it painted, cleaned up. Uh, we got our holes drilled in the top up here. These are just half inch bolts that are just drilled and tapped directly into the casting. We bolted this uh, bracket down. Then uh, the other bracket, again, bolted this one. Appears to be nice and steady. And I think we're ready to mount our Bajor pump up on top. I also took this Bajor pump and cleaned it up, painted it so that it kind of matches the color scheme here. Got a couple of uh, bolts that go up underneath the bottom here. Up into, this is mounted on a plate. Uh, the plate has holes. This uh, bracket here has slots in it so you can move this back and forth to tighten up your belt so we got some adjustment in it and what i want to do now is uh just get these bolts in place okay all right i think we got our oil pump mounted so I'm going to have to make some pulleys uh, to go between the two and uh, put a belt in there. And I think next thing we got to do is run our oil line down to the machine. I got to figure out exactly how I want to do that. There's an oil line that comes out of the top and it needs to go to a fitting up underneath the bed. So uh, let me do some figuring and make sure I got enough tubing. I may have to order some more tubing uh, to go that far. We'll see. Just a view from the other side here, you can see there's the pulley that drives this side or the shaft that drives this side goes to the uh, pulley back here. So anyway, got to finish getting all that hooked up and we getting in the short rows here. Well guys, I lost a little short piece of video here. So I'm going to do a little quick voiceover on part of this. But what I'm pointing out right here, this is the oil line uh, that we ran previously that's actually coming from the distribution block. Uh, the manifold up into the ways where we're injecting the oil in and i had to come from the inside of the planer to the outside so we drilled a hole in the casting for that oil line to come through right now what i'm doing is basically drilling another hole and this is to get the oil line from the oiler up top into this middle part of the planer where we can then snake it over to the distribution block so with that hole drilled i'm just going to feed this uh oil line through the hole and feed it in and get enough material in there that we can then turn around and feed it up to the top of the planer to the oiler uh, up top tie it all in and get that circuit run through there 
So back when I was working on my oil lines to begin with, I ordered a bunch of fittings and so forth uh, that I needed for the project, and we're going to be using those here. And I just put them in a little thing here. So we've got two different types of caps and then the ferrule. So up on the lubricator, we have basically a female cap that's going to go on, and you'll put a ferrule in there like such, and basically you'll just screw this cap down. And what this ferrule does, if you're not familiar with these, when you tighten it down, there's a seat in the bottom of this, there's a seat on the, the lubricator itself, and when you squeeze them together, it compresses that ferrule in place and basically makes a nice uh, tight fitting. So on one end we'll use the female, on the other end we're actually going to use a male fitting. It works exactly the same way. You have your ferrule in there and you tighten them up. Uh, so you know, we got everything we need here in the kit. Uh, we just need to put that up top. So let's go do that. All right, I have ran my line up to the top. You see I got the line, it's actually sticking down a little bit. There's the ferrule. We're gonna drop that down in there. The ferrule comes in on top and we'll just tighten that up. Get the finger tight and then use a wrench and that'll compress that ferrule and we should have a nice fit in there. I've ran my line kind of down the side of this and uh, I'm gonna have to come back later. I I've got some clamps somewhere to clamp this stuff to things, but I don't, I can't find my clamps right now. So we're gonna have to find them, order some more, but I've got it positioned where it needs to be. We'll come back and do that later. So this is the distribution block that we put in before, and I've already got my four lines running out to the four places that will lubricate the ways. I actually got holes drilled through here, fittings, and there's a little oil slots up underneath here. We did that in a video quite some time ago, but just revisiting this in case you missed it. So the oil is going to come into the side here. It's plugged off on the other side. There is a metering valve in each one of these that basically uh, it's, it's like a check valve, but at a certain pressure, it'll let oil go past it. And what that does is more or less allows equal oil to go into all four of these ports. So let's just say that one of these pipes gets a uh, um, little bit more resistance in it than the other. Well, without these valves in here, the oil is going to take the path of least resistance. With these in here, you're putting the same resistance on everything right here. So we're going to get equal oil going to all four points. Even if a line gets stopped up or a line gets broken or whatever, it's, 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 going, to, it's going to work itself out. So we need to take this line and have it come in the bottom. I'm going to probably loop it down and come back up just so I have some extra um, pipe in case I need it for something down the road. It's not going to hurt anything. So let me kind of bend that around. And kind of come over in there like such and we'll cut that and uh, put, our, put our fitting in. So I've just got a tubing cutter here and uh, we will put a little bit of pressure on that. There we go, it just cut off and again, kind of open up that inside that pipe where it kind of pinched it there. Well, this one we'll put a male piece, we'll put us a compression bushing or a ferrule there. This kind of goes in the side like such. And we'll tighten that up. All right, I think we got it plumbed up. I think we have our oil are all plumbed up now. It's ready to go. Uh, like I said, I do need to get my clamps to kind of clamp this tubing in and get everything. I need to put some clamps up underneath the bottom here too. Uh, I need to find those. If not, I'll order some new ones. I'll do that later, no big deal. They'll just be kind of tidy things up. I'll probably also paint this uh, tubing just so it kind of blends into the rest of the planer, but it'll be fine. Uh, I will comment that up on the top, there's a little plunger, uh, I can't reach it, but you can hand pump this. So when we get 
uh, some oil up in there and we're ready to do it, I will prime these lines and get them pumped up good. And then once that thing starts turning, it's just going to put a little squirt uh, every so often. And that will keep these, these ways lubricated. Once you get oil in here, they're oiled up really nice right now. But once you get in here, you don't have to just flood these things with oil. But you will use a little bit of oil along and along. So putting a little drop in, you know, every few minutes, is really all you need uh, to keep this thing properly lubricated and we'll have plenty of plenty of oil going to it. Uh, I'm real happy with that. This is a modification from the original. Uh, the original did not have an older system uh, and it just has to do with the age of the machine. This machine was built in the late 1800s and they didn't have uh, these types of systems back then, at least they weren't commonplace. Um, originally this just had some felt wipers that went on the end that kind of wiped these ways. We're going to put those back on as well uh, and that will help keep the trash out of these as well as to keep them lubricated. But I think injecting the oil in there like this is going to be a big improvement. And later machines, later planers, that was pretty much a standard um, standard operation. So it is a little bit of a deviation from the original, but it is an improvement. And I think it will help, help this machine to perform better and last longer. And guys, uh, with that, that is going to be a wrap on this one. Glad to have the lubricator on there. Uh, like I said, we got to make our pulleys. Uh, to belt this thing up, get some belts on here, and we'll be ready to fire this thing up and try her out. Um, I may go ahead and get some belts on here and just kind of try it out uh, before I get all the, the lubricator stuff done. I'll just have to see how things go, but I'm really anxious to, to power this thing up and, and see, it, see it moving under power. So we're getting real close now. Well, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Hit the bell icon to get those notifications, uh, the little commercial at the end. Uh, but I appreciate all you guys do for me. And we will catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.